In this video, we're going to take a look at adding and subtracting rational expressions. Rational expressions are really fractions, and the rules for adding and subtracting fractions in terms of getting a common denominator definitely apply. So let's take a look at what we're going to do in this particular situation. Let's see. Right here we have a denominator of 3c plus 3 and 3c plus 3. So we have a common denominator, so then all I need to do is just go ahead and do whatever operation it is, whether it's addition or subtraction, across the top. So in this case, I'm going to have a denominator of 3c plus 3. Then on the top, I'm going to have c plus 5. I'll write it all out here. You wouldn't necessarily have to, but I will. c plus 5 minus 4. Okay. Then can we do some simplification? Well, combine like terms here and we have c plus 5 minus 4 would be c plus 1. Now on the bottom, can we factor to do some simplification? Yes we can. We can factor out a 3 here. So I'm going to pull a 3 out of that and if I divide this by 3 I'm left with c. If I divide this by 3 I'm left with 1. Ah, so notice what happens. We have a C plus 1 and a C plus 1 on the top and bottom. So I can go ahead and cancel those out. This will become 1. This will become 1. And I'm left with just 1 over 3. So that one, we get 1 over 3. All right, let's take a look at this next one right down here. In this case, we do not have a common denominator. So I need to get one. Well, that common denominator looks like, hmm, what can I make both of these into? Well, if I multiply this one, top and bottom, by 3, I'll have 3m. So then I'll have that common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. So times 3, times 3. Remember, I'm just creatively multiplying by 1 here to get that denominator so it's the same as the other one, so I can subtract. So then my problem becomes... 7 over 3m minus 2 times 3 is 6 over 3m. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and my denominator is going to be 3m because that was my common denominator. Then I have 7 minus 6, which is going to be 1. Then I look, is there any simplification I could do? Doesn't appear to be because uh, I can't divide anything on the top and bottom other than one so I'm good okay let's take a look over here on this one well the denominators aren't the same I don't have a common denominator but ooh they look awfully similar how I can make them so that they're the same is I could multiply through by a negative one on the top and bottom okay what happens then is this the piece isn't going to change so I have 3 over x minus 10 then plus now notice what happens and when I multiply negative 1 times this thing I have to multiply each piece as though it's in parentheses like that so negative 1 times let's do the x piece first negative 1 times negative x would be plus x and negative 1 times positive 10 would be negative 10. Hey, look at that. We've got a common denominator. So if you've got denominators that are very close to being the same, one just needs to be flipped, remember that you can multiply through by a negative 1. Then I continue on the top here, and I have that negative 1 I need to multiply by the 9, so now I have a negative 9 on top then have a common denominator so go ahead and everything's going to be over that denominator and we have 3 plus negative 9 well 3 plus negative 9 is going to give us negative 6 okay now one thing we should be careful of here sometimes people want to simplify these two things say dividing by 2 top and bottom well, we can't do that. The only time we can simplify top and bottom like that is if we have something that's being multiplied. This isn't being multiplied. It's being subtracted. So 
if we could take it out of both, like if we were factoring, then we could. Like right over here, notice how we pulled the 3 out and then we had that C plus 1 sitting there. I can cancel that because it's multiplication between these two things. So just be very, very careful with that. Okay, let's go to the bottom there and take a look at this last one. Now, it's addition, so I need to find a common denominator. Well, I'm going to start by factoring this to see what exactly makes up this trinomial. Okay, so I have on top, and huh, it looks like I might be able to do some factoring on top as well, but I'm going to hold off on that for just a little bit. Now, hmm, here we've got, so I'm going to rewrite what I've got on top, my numerator. Then on the bottom, this is a trinomial. I'm looking for factors of 8 that add up to 6. Well, that would be 4 and 2. So then, remember, it's going to break up into two things. Signs will be plus and plus because this is plus and this is plus. Then those factors of 8, I said were 4 and 2, like so. Then we've got y squared. Well, to get y squared, we need a y times y. Okay, now let's take a look at this second piece. We've already got a y plus 2 there. And so in order to get that common denominator, I'm going to need to multiply by this part, which I don't have. So I need to multiply on this side by y plus 4 on the top and bottom. Okay, So times y plus 4, and then times y plus 4, top and bottom like so. Now, I write it in parentheses like that because a couple things are going to happen here that are very important. First of all, I need to distribute that 3 through and also it's y plus 2 times this whole thing, not just times y if we didn't put it in the parentheses like that. Okay. So, let's clean up here. Our denominator is going to be the y plus 4 times y plus 2 all over then let's see what we've got on top we've got y squared plus 4y and I'm gonna do this at the same time now I'm gonna distribute this 3 through here so we have 3y plus 3y and then plus 12 Okay, now, let's see. Can we do some more simplification, combining like terms? If we combine like terms here, notice we've got 4y and 3y. That's going to give me 7y. Okay, so then we have y squared plus 7y plus 12. And then that's all over y plus 4 times y plus 2. Okay, then to simplify this, I'm going to have to factor this. And I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to swing up here above it. To factor this, what I'm going to do, well, I'm looking for factors of 12 that add up to 7. I think that would be 4 and 3. So it's going to break up into two things. Signs are plus and plus because that's plus and that's plus plus and plus. To get the y squared, we need a y and a y for our first terms, then the 4 and the 3. Okay, then on the bottom, the numerator, or the denominator, excuse me, we had y plus 4 and y plus 2. Now, notice, anything we can clear out of there? Well, sure enough, we've got a y plus 4 on the top and bottom. So I'm going to cancel those out, then I'm going to be left with, on top, y plus 3, and on the bottom, y plus 2. Okay, so adding and subtracting rational expressions, the rules for adding and subtracting fractions still apply. Namely, we need to make sure that we're finding a common denominator. Then, once we've got our common denominator, off we go. We can use the rules for simplification and uh, get what we need to get. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do anything you put your mind to.